Let's, let's get this Church Mag spotlight underway here. Um, uh, we have Steve Canton from Church Community Builder. And, you know, this is just an opportunity to give our Church Mag readers and, and uh, an idea, kind of the, uh, the man behind the curtain or the people behind the curtain and get a little bit better of a feel. Because, you know, technology is so much about apps and products. It's easy to lose sight of what's really behind all the code and the graphics and everything else. Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself. Wow, so you gotta, you're gonna make me talk about me, huh? <laughs> Great, my favorite topic. <laughs> um, so yeah, I let's see, what can I say about me? First of all, uh, love living in Colorado. Um, I have uh, a wife and uh, two boys, two teenage boys, and we uh, spend a whole lot of time up in the mountains here in Colorado skiing in the wintertime, camping in the summertime, hiking, biking, all those fun outdoor things. So uh, it's, we, I can, as I look out my office window here, this direction, I see Pikes Peak, which is uh, a constant reminder of God's creation and his glory. And so, man, I love, I love that. Um, but originally from Georgia, grew up in Atlanta, and then transplanted to Colorado back in uh, the early 2000s and um, been here ever since. Love it. So I've been with Church Community Builder for six years, a little over six years. Uh, before that was in different other technology firms that serve kind of a nonprofit organizations and uh, parachurch organizations. So, well, so. as somebody who grew up in Colorado and lived in Colorado Springs for a number of years before our travels took us many different places, including where we are right now in Italy, I know exactly what your view looks like, and it is indeed gorgeous. One of the most beautiful places on earth. Yeah, amen. I agree. So, Steve, tell us, tell us, when you started Church Community Builder, when you began to, like, at, at the very beginning, at the, uh, when, when the brainstorms came about, what was the driving force in coming up with Church Community Builder? What really birthed the app, the product that we know as Church Community Builder? Yeah, so um, so what, what I'm what I'll do here, I'm sharing kind of the creation story of Church Community Builder through uh, through my eyes, but of course the guys that started the company, Chris Fowler and Free Grafton, those were the kind of those are the guys that God planted the original vision in back actually in the late '90s. So uh, Free Grafton, uh, which is one of the co-founders, he was planning a church in Southern California. And Chris Fowler was, you know, his best friend and a guy that was uh, kind of brilliant in terms of systems and processes and technology. And so when, as that church was growing, you know, they started experiencing the same problem that many churches do, which is, hey, we're, we're getting a lot of people in the front door, but we've got an equal number of people kind of sliding out the back door. And we're not okay with that. So we want to try to figure that out. And so for this particular church, kind of the... Uh, the key ingredient that they identified, which was kind of uh, common to the people who were sticking, was that they were serving. It was a very volunteer-driven church. And so these guys were like, hey, you know, we know that <clears throat> people who are sticking are serving. We don't know if that's, you know, they're serving because they're committed or they're becoming committed because they're serving. But we do know that that's the common ingredient. So what we want to do is try to find, develop a process and then find a system that will help us do a better job of matching the people who want to serve with the different service opportunities we have in the church. And so that idea sparked originally a, uh, I can't remember what they built the original database in. Um, I should know this because um, I've heard the story so many times, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Basically they built a database to do that. And then they realized really fast that this database that they built, which was a local, you know, locally run and managed database on a server in the office there in the church, wasn't working because they needed it to be more distributive. They needed to get it out and make it available to all the leaders who were kind of empowering those volunteers, right? So then they quickly went to uh, the web with it and built a platform on the, on the internet that would easily allow leaders to take, let's say, let's take Eric and find out what are his gifts, strengths, and abilities, and now let's match him with service opportunities that we have available in our church that are a good fit for that. 
And that was the birth of Church Community Builder. So there was never any, uh, that they really had no idea that it would become a church management system, um, you know, which was kind of cool uh, that they just sort of followed God's lead from that point forward. And what they learned was, hey, it, they saw something very unique in that experience, which was, hey, if we can put tools in the hands of leaders and the leaders can access those tools to do whatever it is that they need to do in the context of their job in that ministry of that church, well, then all kinds of cool stuff happens, right? So then as Church Community Builder began to emerge out of that original volunteer matching tool, it did so in a very decentralized and distributive fashion. But it all began with process. So it really was them thinking through the lens of process. How do we take process and support it with technology and then make it available to as many people as possible? So that really was how it all well, got started. Well, there's a couple of things that really stand out to me that I think are really, really awesome. And that is, number one, the process was birthed in an analog, organic way. It wasn't, um, it, it, it didn't come from the digital side. You know, they had an organic problem, and that's, that's the point of reference that they came from. The second thing is, I'm envisioning a server in a church and serving up a database. And, I mean, that is just like the essence of church tech, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely absolutely is. brilliant and you know I, I think that this is and we touched about we touched on this in the podcast a little bit when we, when you and I talked and that is if you're a smaller church or a small church and you're hearing about a C, you know uh, uh, a, a, a man, member management kind of system you're thinking you know we're a small church what do we need this kind of thing for and I think it's really important that you address that again especially in the context of of you talking about the birth of Church Community Builder and how, you know, it wasn't some mega church that necessarily birthed this. It was an up-and-coming right. church. So talk right. a little bit about that. Why smaller churches should consider a church management system like Church Community, Community Builder? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good question. We get that one all the time. Uh, we, we work with, we partner with a number of different church planning organizations where at that organizational level, they go, man, we, we know we've got to get our church planners um, s established with some sort of foundation in terms of systems. And so that, uh, that really, that's number one. So first of all, if a church planner is going into this planting journey with the ambition to grow, and all of them do, right? They all want to grow. Then how do you grow? How do you create some foundational systems and processes that will then support that growth? Because even though we are very relational, obviously, uh, in, in terms of leading a church and planning a church, we quickly, if God's blessing that ministry, we're going to quickly reach the limit of our relational capacity because we only have a limited amount of that, right? That's a finite number. And so we have to be able to replicate ourselves and do that through systems and processes. So that's where technology, and especially a good church management system, really can serve that church planner well because you can establish some baseline processes and then a good system to support that and as you grow then that system just allows you to scale and support that growth so that that's kind of the first thing and I think the second thing really is closely related and it is that relational piece so uh, the way that we scale in the church is we empower more people and uh, so we, we need more leaders and volunteers who can come alongside us and their relational capital kind of amplifies ours and uh, scales our own and so then we've got to give them a tool to go do that. Now, if we don't start with that baseline system and process, we don't start with that, that church management system, then what will happen is those leaders will quickly go find some kind of a tool that will help them do their job. And then as you grow, what happens is all of a sudden now you've got these data silos that are just kind of popping up everywhere. And now data starts to become disconnected. And so what we see happening with the churches that don't start as a church plant with that good foundational system is as they hit about 500 or so in attendance, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 in attendance, they start feeling the pain of uh, not having good tools or having multiple tools that are disconnected. Now people are kind of falling through the cracks of those data silos, and then they're looking to fix it. Well, that's a much greater pain trying to fix that when you're 500 to 1,000 than it is to just start that way. Right, as a church exactly. Plant fundamental and important. And Steve, thank you for spending some time here on the Church Mag Spotlight, giving us, you know, 
uh, an active live face behind Church Community Builder. And, you know, I see in the background there, you've got some University of Georgia memorabilia. And, you know, Church Mag was birthed in Georgia. So I'm sure there are some people watching that are like, all right, go Georgia. Go dogs.